Welcome to Stay On The Scene Presents. This is a Fuse FM special. Tonight we have a guest who stars in a TV soap that was the sole reason why I came to university. That being so I could stay at home and watch Neighbours every day, twice a day. <laughs> yes, his character has had numerous affairs on his wife, fathered an illegitimate child, survived a heart attack and a saucy date rape, quit medicine so to sell eggs from his home and work for a dodgy drugs company and, in true middle-aged fashion, has developed an addiction for golf. It is none other than Alan Fletcher who plays Dr. Carl Kennedy in Hello. <laughs> Welcome, Alan. Thank you. Now, first of all, what a great honour it is to have you in the Fuse FM studios. Uh, the the honour is mine. I feel like literally you've been this far away from me and Aaron, probably the, the entirety of our life that we can remember. I being on TV. I really hope I haven't sort of ruined your life in any way, have I? I mean, reading that list, it sounds like I've, I've, I'm not a very good role model. <laughs> well, how does it feel to know that you've been such a big part of millions of people's daily life for a, a time period spanning over 13 years now? Yeah, it's an awesome feeling, it really is. I mean, wherever I go, I get received so warmly and, you know, people want to meet me and say hello. And I know, I know myself well enough to know that I'm a pretty boring bloke, so <laughs> it's kind of rather exciting that people are interested in me. Okay, you're deemed over here, I'm sure as you know, as a, a living legend, so, <laughs> as many of the Neighbours stars are. So why do you think Cole Kennedy's so popular on the opposite side of the world? Oh, look, I, I get asked a lot and I, I just really don't know. I mean, I, I think maybe because he's flawed, you know, he's a kind of nice guy. He's, you know, he's, he's the sort of person you, you wouldn't mind meeting, but he's flawed as well. And I think it's quite interesting to have TV characters that have got flaws rather than just, you know, the perfect David Hasselhoff type, you know. <laughs> Nothing sticks to me type character, um, and, and, and it's just I think he's a, he comes across as an approachable person. A lot of people say to me that he, he seems like a father figure, so I'm pretty proud of that. I like that. Does it ever get too much for you? I mean, is there ever a moment when you just want to stroll down to the local market, pick up a pound of kangaroo meat, take it back to the barbie <laughs> for your family, and just be like, I pray no one bothers me today? No, no, I never have that problem because. Uh, I find that people are really respectful and I'm always happy to stop and have a quick chat with someone. Um, you know, people don't want much, they just want to say hello and they want to tell you they like your show and they like your character and that's, you know, kind of, I'd feel rude if I didn't give them the opportunity to do that because that's what I do for a living, you know, that's yeah. what I'm supposed to do. The only time it gets a little bit kind of wearing is when you're out on the road for these tours, um, is, is doing like really early morning, you know, radio or TV calls and then working till two, three in the morning and getting up, getting four hours sleep and, you know, that's the only time it kind of wears you out of it. Okay, we'll talk about the main reason you're here tonight. You're performing at the Manchester Academy, yeah. at the waiting room. So what can we expect from tonight's event? Well, it's, it'll be a big, big party. That's what it's about. Okay. Uh, we like to do lots of songs that I, the music I love uh, in the covers that people love to sing along with and enjoy. Um, we've got some waiting room songs, some new material, which we've just released lately. And, um, so, you know, we do a few old time songs, a bit of medleys, you know, a bit of a sing along, and then um, a, a, there's also a couple of neighbour songs in there, just a bit of a, a doff of the hat to the to the neighbours fans, and you know, a bit, just a bit of a laugh, really. Uh, staying on music, are we ever going to see a return of oodles and oodles? I know. I, I, would, I really want to do a national tour through creches and kindergartens. You know, it would work. I, I like liked oodles and noodles. You know, I liked wearing my leather pants. <laughs> It was really cool. Uh, I don't know. I don't know that I'll ever turn up on the show again. <laughs> How is it that we see you on on Neighbours today, but you're over here in England now? You're funny, then, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I do a lot of flying. Now, um, yeah, the, we, you're three months behind Australia. Right. Australia sees it four months after it's made. Okay. Uh, and good old Carl, at this stage to be here, I'm visiting my illegitimate child Holly. Do you find it difficult fitting in the filming of Neighbours with touring the band, or is it? No, they're very understanding at work. They just say, um, you know, look, if you want to apply for leave to take time off, then you can do it. And generally you get it if you give them enough notice. So that's very cool. Uh, in terms of putting tours together are really difficult. They're, they're logistically incredibly difficult, getting everything together just before you go. So um, you don't, see that, that's the hardest thing is actually doing the neighbours work, getting the tour together. Because neighbours is my priority and, and it has to be my priority. So everything else gets done at three in the morning. Could you, uh, could you clear up a problem of mine? Mm -hmm. um, what is the Australian illustration of Santa? I mean, obviously he's from the North Pole. He's exactly the same. It's really? tragic to say it, but he's a 
big fat guy with white is beard. Is it not? Um, uh, is, is he not pictured on the beach with a beer? Uh, sometimes you'll see wine. pictures of Santa wearing stubbies, what we call stubbies, which are like little work shorts and thongs. Yeah, so there there not, are derivations. Not too hot for him. Yeah, there's a gr there's a great Australian Christmas carol. It's about to the tune of Jingle Bells, about bouncing through the bush in a in a you know burnt out olden Ute. And it's, it's, all the lyrics have been changed to suit Australia. There's some, some good Australian Christmas carols, but we are very traditional about Christmas in Oz. It's the whole thing, you know, it's the, the manger and the, the snow and the Christmas carols, everything's exactly the same, it's just that it's 30 degrees. <laughs> Seeing as we are entering the festive time of year, how are you going to be spending Christmas? Are you back in Australia? Yeah, I'm back right. home. Uh, I shall be, I should do it traditionally, church in the morning with the kids, then we'll go home. There'll be presents, we'll have the lunch, which I'll have my roast turkey, my, my, my pudding with brandy butter, gotta have the brandy butter. And then uh, if it's hot enough, we'll have a swim and play cricket down the park and then I'll have a sleep. Amazing. <laughs> Can you confirm a few of our, our rumours? Mm -hmm. Is it true that Libby is returning? It's absolutely true. The most exciting change to the show that I've seen in a long time and to have her back has been brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Are we gonna be seeing a return to the villainous side of Paul Robinson? That, that we don't know. No one's confirmed or denied that at work. At the moment, Paul is as he is. We've heard that Harold Bishop will be leaving Ramsey Street. I can confirm for you that we filmed Harold's last scenes on Neighbours. Technically, he has left Neighbours, but they managed to convince him at the 11th hour to come back and do guest spots. So he will come back and do six week stints ne next year as a guest. So no, Harold is not completely vanishing. Well, what has your favourite Neighbours moment been over the years? Oh wow, so many of them. Um, well, pretty much anything I've done with, you know, big, the big stuff with Jackie Woodbird yeah. who plays Susan. Probably the, the most, the scene that had the most impact on me and I think on her too was when Carl had his midlife crisis and he sort of didn't know where, what to do in his life and they were having, having guidance counselling and he, he turned to her and he said, I just don't love you anymore. Um, and that, that really kind of affected us both personally as well. We don't get, obviously, get involved in our characters off the screen. We don't take it home with us. But that did affect us emotionally, both of us, because it was signalling the end of a, of a fantastic working you know, partnership. And that lasted for quite a few years before we eventually got back together again. During um, negative storylines for Carl, like when you had the affair, do you ever get looks in the street or people shouting things yeah, at you? Yeah, <laughs> I do, but people are pretty good about it. I, you know, people are able to separate your character from the thing. I mean, a lot of the baddies I'm told on soaps don't get that. The, you know, the really bad characters are often kind of treated like they're doing it for real. Um, but you know, I, I'd always get the wag of the finger and all that sort of stuff. But I think people kind of s secretly admired it in a strange sort of way. Well, what is your future now mm. for Neighbours? Uh, well, I'm, I'm there until September uh, next year. And um, we'll, I'm sure we'll have talks between us at the beginning of the year next year and see, uh, see whether I'm going to be a rooster again or a feather duster. Yeah. Are there big plans for your band or are you firmly in acting? Well, the thing about our, our, the band is that the, everyone in the band has, has so many of the other interests as well. Like, you know, I do stage musicals and I do Neighbours and uh, we write together as a band so we, we'll continue to release music. Um, Tommy Rando is about to release his solo album called Antidote and he'll probably find himself over here in the UK a lot more next year promoting that. Uh, and Chris Hawker works in a, a fantastic band, band called Airway Lanes in Australia which are kind of on the verge of just breaking through now where they've, they've got their record deal and then it's about to break through so everyone's got their projects going on so um, you know where we go from here will a, a lot of it will be dependent on what happens to each individual member of the band in terms of acting have you ever thought about moving away from the soap stardom sort of arena into films at all? well I, I've done so much in 30 years of acting I've done you know plays films radio television um, you know presentation live concerts rock and roll so I've just had this blessed career and I'm so happy at Neighbours I really love being there that it's kind of at the moment it's a good fit for me um, and in terms of films I'd love to do some Brit films I'd love to come over here and work on some Brit films because I, I just think there's some fantastic film made here um, some great Aussie films made but there's so few of them and um, you know the most of the time the roles for guys like myself uh, would, would be pretty pretty small um, you know, a lot of the leads are generally younger actors. So I, th I just think the British the Brit industry shows a lot more uh, opportunity for older actors to, to shine and to do good work and have good roles. So you might see me over here sometime. Excellent. Lock, to lock stock and two smoking cars. <laughs> <laughs> well, Owen, it's been great to speak with you. It's been fantastic um, being here. Look forward to tonight's performance.
Thank and I uh, wish you all the best in the future and hope you remain on our screens for many years to come. Sweet as. Alan Fletcher, everybody. <laughs> Thank you.